Vikings. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm. They were a crazy lot, them Vikings, you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, he's going to take you? Okay, Ooh. all right, Wilson. Yeah, Robert. Okay, Robert. Yeah. Bob, as we say in England, Bob. <laughs> Short for Robert, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. Yeah. Oh, he was my uncle. He's passed, he's passed away now, but he was my uncle, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you, Wilson. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. Enjoy the tour. Thank you very much, Wilson. Good. Thank right. you. Nice to meet you. Yes, Bob. Um, Cheers to meet you, okay. You're who? Yo, Bob, I'm tight, Ron. You call me Ron, though, if you want. Ron, Ron, Ron. Ron. Okay. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, Ron. Yeah. yeah, I'm Sentongo. Sentongo, you're most yeah. welcome. Yeah. Okay. Yes, how are you? I'm okay, we are YouTubers also. Are you happy? Yeah. Introduce yourself to, my, to our audience. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to brief from that side. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My man, I met him off YouTube, this my man. I met him off YouTube. <laughs> so I'm from Manchester, <laughs> England, and this my man. He's a local, like, okay. so I met him, I met him England. on YouTube, so we arranged to meet, you know? Okay. Bit of a communication uh, problem at the beginning, but we, we, we got there in the end, and, and, and we finally connected, you know, so here we are. Yes, yeah. okay. you know, We thought it'd be ideal to come down here and, okay. and do a bit of a shoot and make the place more famous and bring some newcomers here again, you know? Yeah. I'll yeah. be showing my friends back home, yeah. the video, you know, so okay. they'll know they'll know about this place and you many more will, you know? Yeah. I'll show the video, you know? Yeah, that's yeah, nice. You tell them to come and visit us here yeah. in Uganda, yeah. yeah. So I'm showing them, showing them the beautiful, you know, the beautiful countryside, okay. yeah. the landscape, you know? Okay. Yeah, so you're most welcome once again. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Bob. I'm called Robert Mirembe. Okay, Rob, yeah. And nice to, uh, to be your guide. So, uh, our caves from here are very close, like 400 meters. And then those caves are still preserved in its natural form, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Some of the locals would complain about the state of the path, which are be crawling, it's a little bit slippery. Okay. Be crawling. In I realize I should have put maybe some better footwear on, but I'm looking at yourself. You've got, those your, ones are okay. you, you've got your dancing shoes on, you mm -hmm. know, so. It yeah. hasn't been raining, so you'll be okay. Yeah, there. okay. Yeah, so, uh, what is special within those caves are these features, the stalactites. Mm -hmm. Are the ones hanging on the upper ceiling of a cave. Right. And the locals here, they would call them the boobs, the breast cave. Right. <laughs> yes, because of its nature. Yeah. And then we have another one formed on the floor of a cave called stalagmites. Okay. So these two features continue to grow. As the stalactites grow downwards, the stalagmites will grow upwards. Yeah. So eventually the two will meet. Yeah. Forming what we call a pillar. So you'll be seeing very many of those which have been joined for millions and millions yeah. of years. Yeah, long time, yeah. Since the growth rate is less than an inch per year. So now touching on them is highly prohibited. Okay. That should you touch on it, you would have taken some percentage of calcium bicarbonate and yeah. of which you may affect them yeah. or you hinder its growth rate. Mm. And yet in the whole of this country, it's the only place where you can see them here. Yeah. So it is very much, we are very much blessed having it here. Of course, yeah. I'm not allowed to touch. Yeah. Well, the science says that. Mm. I know you get them around, the, I've seen them before, you get them around the world, but they, they are quite rare, aren't they, no matter where you yeah. get them. Okay. You've, just, you've just said it, that this is the only place in Uganda yes. where they found, you know. Mm. Just because of having limestone oh, accessible, rocks. accessible, only, yeah. yeah. Having limestone rocks here. And uh, you know where there's limestone rocks, most of the rocks are permeable, they are sedimentary rocks, they allow water to go through. Yeah. So within those rocks, there is another weak acid called calcium carbonate. Yeah. Yeah, the locals here would call them like salt. That's yeah. why this place yes. is called Nyakasura. Yeah. This is the place of salt within these rocks. Yeah. Okay. So what happens as the rainwater passes through the atmosphere, collects carbon dioxide, that water becomes carbonic acid. So as it falls on the top of these rocks, it penetrates. Since they are porous, they allow water to sink through. Yeah. So when it, they get inside, there is another weak acid, so the two will dissolve. Carbonic acid from the atmosphere reacts with the... Uh, calcium carbonate so the two will dissolve from a solution which is called calcium bicarbonate and the locals here they would call salt. them milk coming milk. out from okay. because it's like lime it is whitish in color yes it's, it's salt isn't it basically yes, yes. yeah so as that solution is deposited on the floor then those small crystals begins to form a, a feature called stalagma from the ground yeah. and then some little one remains hanging on the ceiling as it forms teeth so the two continues to go. Some are deposited on the floor, some remains on the ceiling. But he said the ones on the floor grows faster compared to the one which is hanging. Yeah. Because the one which is hanging is losing. Yeah. The one on the floor is gaining. Mm. So it keeps on eroding, eroding, and eventually, after maybe decades of years, they eventually meet yeah. former pillar. I've been to 
Mm. I was, I was, this is my fifth continent, this. Yes. Hey. So, my first time in Africa, oh, I've been to five oh. continents. I've seen these in other places around the world, yeah. and I know how, how rare they are, yeah. I'm told you there is the biggest one in, in France. Have you been to no, France? No, I've not been to, I've not seen them in France, no. Yeah. There's another one in France, there's another one there's in... There's some in Nepal, I've seen them in Nepal, I've seen them Nepal. in England yeah, as well. Yeah, and even Argentina. Right, also okay, have. I've not been to Argentina, no. Yes, they have very big caves that they use even canoes, I'm told also I've never yeah. been there. I think, so. I've seen, I think I've seen some in Greece as well, maybe, in Greece, I think, maybe. Yes. But uh, definitely yeah. Nepal is a big In mountain. Africa, in South Africa. Yeah. In big, South you go down here. Yeah, yeah that, it was, it's usually the case that you go underground to these. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. it's all about access, it's probably more, it's mm. just that they're not accessible, are they? Mm. You know, these underground caves we'll never know about, they're not accessible. Actually. And you actually, know? where we're heading is just a smaller cave, like, yeah. Uh, but uh, we're told by a geologist who had come from German, that within this area we have another big cave, but it's not yet discovered. Not like, accessible. If you jump, yeah. the whole of this area sounds hollow. Yeah. That not, means this, there's another big yeah. cave here. Yeah, it's what we're saying, not accessible, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And during his stay here, you could see a lot of bats. You know, these bats, mammals fly at night. Yeah. Mm. You could see a lot of them flying. And when it comes to daytime, you could look for them and they were nowhere to be seen. So he was wondering, where do they go? Where are they? So they, they, they're accessing it, There's yeah. There's another big cave. Maybe they have a small hole where they enter and shh, they yeah. go in there. Yeah. Sometimes they disappear for months and months and you don't see them. I've been here, right? Okay. Yeah. When they get a hole near the hole, they come out. They all come out and then they all go. Yeah, back. fascinating. Mm. So, yeah. So within the same place, you have another, uh, we have a waterfall as well, which originates from Renzori as a result of glaciation. Renzori is over there. Yeah. Those are lower ranges of Renzori. So you shall go behind the waterfalls and in front of it. And if you don't mean, you can take a shower. Most of plants, they prefer to have a natural shower. Go and okay. shower down there. Well, maybe, maybe. Yes. When, after that, Kale, to a nature walk, we shall hike a number of hills where we shall see some crater lakes. Okay. So the walk is like they take one, two hours depending on the fit. Okay. Fitness and at the time you have you want. Okay. Yeah, so let's begin our jungle walk. Okay. Then later we shall go savanna hiking. Okay. That is today. So the highest altitude is going to be 1,657 meters above sea level. Right. That's how we shall end our tour. Yes, and then. Okay. Then we we'll what's, what's the altitude again? The altitude here is not the, when we end. Where well, we shall end? It's, it will be 1,657 feet. Feet. Right. Okay. Above sea level. Right. But the normal altitude of this for auto is, is 1,000. Right. Okay. So we're going 600 plus. Yeah. Mm, but we're yeah I've just been just short of 4,000 meters in Nepal. That's the ice I've been. Yeah. I'm hoping one day to do a trek. It's it's called Kailash. It's a bet. Okay. And that's one of the highest passes on earth. A pass is a, is a, is a pathway, but it's a pathway which passes a mountain by. Yeah. So you speak about, you hear, you hear and people speak about summiting mountains, yeah. but to pass a mountain, you, once you get to the top of a mountain, you can't really see it, you mm. get a good view. But mm. a pass get, gives you opportunity to have a panoramic view of that mountain. Yes. And Kailash is a great mountain. It's a special mountain. Mm. It's, it's five, five, 500, it's 5,800 uh, meters and above sea level. It's a high and one. It's one of the highest it's like in, in the Tanzania. world. Yeah. It's like Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. I think it's higher than that. I think yes. it's higher than that. Yeah, I, 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 well, how high is, how high is uh, Kilimanjaro? How high is it? Kilimanjaro is 5,816. Right, is it? Right, okay. It, so yes. it's, it's like the it, summer to back then. It's the highest in East Africa. Okay, well, it's yes. like the it's high, uh, Kilim, ice in, in Africa, isn't it? Kilimanjaro. Yeah, it's the, the highest. So it's, it's about the same height as Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a walk. Obviously, when you, you walk in there, you know, it takes it out of you. Very cold up there. Yeah, well, there's, there's only a certain time of year you can do the mountain. It's mm. a very special mountain. And they call it the centre of the earth, the centre okay, of the universe. The of the universe. Now, the, the, the earth itself is on a pivot. If okay. it, is it a 60 degree pivot? Yeah. As it spins. Okay. If you straighten the earth, mm. it's kind of at the centre of it. It's a, it's a religious place for, for uh, spiritual place or religious place, I'm going to put it, for mm. uh, Hindus and for Buddhists and for Janis. Okay. And the, it's called a korba to go, to korba. go to, a korda, no, korda, to go round it once, a korda. Mm. It's, about, uh, it's about, I think it's about 50 miles or something to go all the way around it, you mm. know? To the top? No, to go around it. Go around it. No one's ever climbed it. No, it's unclimbable. It's not the highest mountain. Mm. Uh, it's unclimbable. There's only a certain time of year where they allow you near it, mm. or the mountain lets you near it. You've got to go in the summertime. 
Mm. You can't go, uh, I think there might be a four month p uh, window period when you can go up to the mountain. Mm. Any other time, you can't get near it. There's atmospheric changes, the weather, like lightning, there's some crazy stuff happening up there. There's some lakes you, you pass on the way up there as well. Mm. One's supposed to be like a, say, God Lake, one's supposed to be a Devil Lake. Okay. Uh, and, and it's supposed to be the home of, of, mm. the, of the deity, uh, hey. Lord Shiva, who, who's like a Hindu deity. Okay. Uh, most, of the, most of the temples in India are all Shiva temples. Mm. And these temples, are, uh, they, they're made for the energy, okay. you know, for the energy which they might. You, won't, you mm. get Hindu temples here, but mm. no Shiva mm. temples okay. outside of India. Okay. Uh, the, the Shiva is from Nepal. Nepal, uh, Nepal, yeah, Nepal is the capital of, of, of no, India. Nepal is north of India. Uh, used to be part. India used to be a massive, massive region. India yes, is like it's a, very big. I'm told. Very big. It used and to be part of even Af Afghanistan. It used yes. to be right up to China. So it used to be to part. Of this uh, like like Kailash is in Tibet, mm. but that part of of Tibet or China yes. used to be part of India. Okay. So the Indians still go up there. You can't access it. Yeah. without going through Nepal yeah. and you have to go through a, a reputable tour operator mm. yeah. you can fly into China but yeah. you can't fly into Tibet the Chinese will not let you fly directly into Tibet oh, they don't. so no the best way to access Tibet <laughs> to is to go through Nepal and, and to, to say that you're going up yeah to yeah up to the up to Kailash I hope to do that one day you okay. know that's the one thing I hope to do one day mm. but it's a mate if you google it Mm. People say the island, the, the sorry, the the mountain itself. The Russians, some Russians say that is man-made. It's not man-made. It's aliens, and and they they talk about an underground city <laughs> underneath it. There's all this talk. It's a, this is it's the most mysterious mountain on earth. Okay. It's called Kailash. Kailash. If you if you if you, if you Google Kailash. it, well, I'll be honest with you. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, all, all this, all the, you know, uh, that part of the world once mm. really was part of Africa, mm. right? Yeah. Mm. And you can see where it was part of Africa. You can see where East Africa, everything came out of East Africa. Mm. If you look at like, say, I thought this is Sunni Muslim, yeah? Yeah. yeah? And I said to any Sunni Muslim from Africa, especially East Africa, go up the, the more, and not a lot of Muslims know this who were Sunni, right? Yes. But the three most holiest places for any Muslim uh, is, is, first of all, is, is Mecca, Medina, Medina. Ayatska mm. Mosque. Yes. And then for the Shiites, they go to I Iran. Yeah. You go to Iran, to a, mm. to a mosque in Iran. But the Sunnis, mm. the Sunnis, mm. it's Ahara, 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 Ethiopia, Ahara. Mm. And that was where the first ever mosque was built. That's where, when the Prophet was chased from Saudi, yeah. he went there and Bilal did the first call for prayer there. The Saudis claim that they have the oldest mosque, but they're liars. The oh. oldest mosque is from Ethiopia, oh, because okay. that's because he was because that's where he, he, uh, the, the Prophet established his first congregation. Oh, then he okay. come out of Ethiopia, he came yeah. back to Medina okay. and then he started to like force you know his, his way okay, on people yeah. but but he was chased from Saudi yeah. and it was a light and the and the Saudis followed him the Arabs followed the, the, they followed him and him and Bilal and they went to the line of Judah the emperor yeah. of Ethiopia okay. and they said kill Bahamid Mm. And and the, and it was the emperor of Ethiopia, Lana Judah, who said, "No, we won't kill him. We did the same to Jesus. Mm. Yes, yes. So we let him live. If it wasn't for the Ethiopians, mm. the, 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 Muhammad would not have lived because the yeah. Saudis were going to kill him. Mm. Yes, yes. So uh, so I said to any Sunni Muslim, go to go to Ethiopia, Hahara. Mm. Everything came out of East Africa. The, the, even the old, even the Jews who, who, who were banished from Jerusalem, yes, yes, yes. the Phallishers, who, who killed Barabbas." So he said that you had the option of killing. No, the Romans give an option. You either kill Barabbas yes. or kill or kill Jesus. Jesus. The they Jews, said, the Jews, said, release Barabbas. the Jews did not. Yeah, they did <laughs> not accept. So they, they, instead of they killed Jesus. They killed Jesus. So they were banished from the land. Yeah. Yes. Where did the Falish Jews go? They returned back to East Africa to Ethiopia. Okay. Even even the oldest, right? And I said to any Christian who often like you get Catholics here. Yeah. I said, well, why are you Catholic? Why are you not? Why are you not following the Church of Ethiopia? Yeah. The Church of Ethiopia mm. is 500 years older than the Church of Rome. Oh. Now, when you talk about Middle East, right? It's no Middle East. Yes. Where, if there's a Middle East, where's South? Where's North? Where's West? That's a, all part. The first people in the Middle East came from East Africa. Oh, here. And, yeah. Inside. And then when you see, and then when you see, right? Yeah, the mm. Red Sea and yes. the Indian Ocean. So the, the Indian Ocean. Yes. You can see where India separated from Africa. Yes. And that's why the tritronic plates moved towards China. Yeah. The Earth mounted up, and you've got the highest mountains on Earth. Okay. Same as South America was part of Africa. Same yeah. as Australia. It's so why the similar person. people and the, you know and the, and the lands that and similar an, animals. But everything came out of East Africa. Everything did, yeah. Everything, everything side. did, yeah. Okay. So when I talk about this Kailash and all this, all this business, mm. that part of the world 
only separate from East Africa. Mm. They say the, the Hindus will say that the gods carved it out. They, mm. You know, it happened for the week, whatever. Mm. But all that's the only thing which has happened is that it's separated from East Africa. Okay. It's just separate, but it was once mm. part of it, like the Middle East and everywhere else, yeah. you know? Yeah, what's mm. part of this side? Yeah, mate, no, everything came out of East Africa. Everything mm. did. Mm. It gives birth, you know, it gives birth to, to everything, to, 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 you know? <laughs> so, you know, that's the truth. And the first man came from Africa. Is it, is it a bird? Yes. bird yes. Yeah, the first man came from around, uh, this a lizard, the blue lizards. Yeah. The lizard. The, the first, well, the, well, the, it wasn't a man, it was a woman, wasn't it? Mm. And scientists say mm. she's called Mondricordial Eve. Mondricordial mm. Eve. Yeah. yeah. They said from either from, Tanzania, from Lake Victoria. Ta yeah, Tanzania, around that area. Tanzania, Ma Uganda. Ma Mandro Eve. Mandricord mandricordial means Mandric means like means uh, relation to foundation. Eh. So like you say, like a horse, the mandricordial of that horse, eh. the true breed of it is that. Oh. Or the mandricordial of that lizard is from there. Yeah. So, you know, so it's like the basis. The of, best, of, of, the founder, the yeah, foundation. Yeah. She was a black woman and yeah. every single human is related. to These Western scientists call her mandricordial mm. Eve. Mandri right, yeah? Mandricordial mm. Eve. Which means that the foundations of, 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 of us, yeah. every single human whether oh, they oh, yeah, whether yeah. they Chinese Russian oh, yeah. where, where they can all the DNA is all related back to her yeah, yeah. but they don't know who the father is we all have the, the true father's DNA they can't locate it they know the, the woman mm. so it, it didn't come from a man yeah. it came from a woman yes yeah <laughs> That's from the rib. <laughs> well, well that's all he said. But it came from an East African woman. Yeah. So everything came out of East oh, Africa. I'll tell you another thing, right? Are, are you Bantu? Yeah, are you Bantu? Bantu yes. Right, well, my, well, this year, right, is... My, 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 you know, my father's from the West Indies, right? I have Jamaican family. And yeah, you're from Jamaica. Yeah, well, my family, I have, I, have, I have Jamaican family and Trinidadian family, right? Yeah. But but them regions are in the Caribbean, or known yeah. as the West Indies. Yes. Two Indias, East India, where yeah. Pakistan is, West India, both both English names. They called East. They called East India. The, the, first of all, they called the original name for India is Bharat. Bharat. They called it the East Indian Company, where yeah. they were robbing whatever. They called it the West Indies, where they were robbing whatever. Right? Okay. Yeah. Well, they, so they sent the slaves. They got them from Ghana. Mm, this is a shanty of Ghana. Okay. So they sent the slaves from the easy to put them on a ship because they had a coast. Yes. Two, yes. two from that. Also, the also Nigeria. They sent them. To, Nigerians mainly went to America. Yes. They went to America, mm. but the, the, the from from Ghana, even some of my dad's language has mm. some Ashanti names in it. Yes. The, the, the Patwa or the Creole mm. is broken English mm. with, with, with some Western African names. Okay. And my father's in particular, right, yeah, mm. has some Ashanti words in it. Okay. So Bantu came, mm. came around the, mm. what, what we now call the Nigerian region yes. mm. four, four or five thousand years yes. ago. Yes. Yeah. That's it. And then it's expanded over to here. So mm. it's obvious that the, it's obvious that, like I say again, mm. the East African, the East African, they, they took the other way. They went east towards India and places like that. And yes. even some of the Chinese, if you go go back in time and look at the pictures, they're very black. And yes. even you look at the Chinese now, mm. some of the Chinese have the big, big, heavy features. Yes. But the, the West Africans, mm. we have the more bigger lips and the bigger noses mm. yes, yeah. than what East Africans do. Mm. You know, you know, you know. And but again, the Bantu originally came out of that region of the earth. So it's obvious that the, the East Africa went more east. Mm, Do you know, they went more east. And, towards... and, like, and people here say the Bantu came from Portuguese. No, Portuguese. no, no. But you know, they came out of what we now call the Nigerian area mm. for five, four, five thousand years ago. Okay. The Bantu. So they've come over from west mm. over to this region. Mm. Maybe looking for farming land or whatever. People... Yeah, they, they, they came uh, to graze. They had animals. They were cattle keepers. That originally yeah, they yeah. came looking, well, yeah. grazing animals. They found themselves they already. Decided. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think me personally, East Africa obviously is the oldest place, and <laughs> you know there was that. There's that much history to East Africa. It's been forgotten. So when I'm talking about Bantu, that's only early African history. Yes. You know, you know, and I, I, and, and I think, mate, the pyramids could be millions of years old. Yes. Because you can't date stone, and you know, Egypt was, was the height of African civilization once, and it was copied by all the West, yes. who claim that it was theirs, but it's not, you know. Okay. Even the Indians try and claim Egypt, mm. some of them. Mm. But yeah, it's Africa, you know, they, they, they yes. created the world, basically. So this, this, uh, this, this uh, for how long has this, this forest been here? 
Ah, this one was discovered in 19, early 16 there. Yeah. But since then, people would just come to see it freely. Mm. But it was opened for tourism. Yeah. But in 1991, it was 1991. Mm, that's when people started praying. Okay. Mm. You know, at first we had bad regimes, people couldn't tour, couldn't visit. It's a, it's a, like a virgin land. Yeah. yeah. So this tree is has never been encroached. Huh? Before the Europeans introduced this kind of clothing, our great parents would make their own back cloth from this tree. So they would get the back, it has got a thick back. So as they would hit those fibers, then those fibers would expand. It has got some kind of rubber, kind of. So it expands, then they dry it on the sand, they shock it on the water, until it becomes a cloth. They call it Urubugo. Yeah, in our local language, in our local it's a back cloth. You call it what? Orubugo. Oh, it's your piece. No, it's your vet there, your vet somewhere. Mm. Say it again to me, sorry, one more time. Orubugo. 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 It's a back cloth. Made up from this tree. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But today they are just for cultural ceremonials. If there is coronation in the palace. Oh. The women wear skirts. Is that what they make the skirts yeah, like from? Skirts or yeah. vase or anything. Yeah. Yeah, a shopping bag, mm. a hat. A, a wallet, mm. all are made from this. Okay. Mm. But today... Uh, How old is this tree then? How old, what's the, the age of this tree? adopting the Western culture. But yeah, I know <laughs> that. So no, that's why I thought I'd put this on, you know. Yeah. Put a bit of culture back into the place, you know. Yeah. It, you know, I know, I mean, I've got... It's place. a culture dress, a culture well, wear. Well, it's also, it's also comfortable. I have pants as well as shorts. But yes. I put shorts on because I'm, I'm, because I'm a... I'm from a cold climate now in Manchester and, and mm. you know, I just appreciate the warmth. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. you know, I just, mm. it's just, this is just comfort, this. Yes, you know, yes. I, I from Ghana, it's a Ghana well, it, was ma it was made, the cloth, is, the cloth itself is, is licensed, because yeah. it it's, 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 it's the, it's the real, it's the real one. Yeah, okay. The Shanti. Yes. It has some writing on it somewhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's an art, an art number, right? Okay. So the Ashanti, which the royal family, they mm. never, they, it comes from the kente. The kente okay. means that which does not snap, doesn't break. Okay. They, and these patterns, they, they kept, the only royal family could wear these patterns once. Uh. They never released it to the, like, to the lower classes, right? Uh. Lower, lower classes. They mm. never did. They've got some patterns which they only keep for themselves, the, uh, the uh, Ashanti. Uh. You can go to the Ashanti in Ghana, you can go to the, to a shop, and all the patterns are there, and you can say, I want that one, and the woman will make it for you. Okay. Whether you want the kente, or whether you want a gown like this. Yeah, they'll so make what, it for you. Yeah, so what they've done, they've licensed a company in Holland, because Holland are the biggest farming producers in mm. Europe. Mm. They, make, they produce a lot of cotton, and it's good quality cotton, if you feel that. Mm. Mm. You know, yeah, really good cool. quality cotton. Mm. So they've licensed them to, 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 to manufacture these, yes. you know, for them. Yes. So it was a Nigerian woman. I asked because I was looking on the internet trying to find a gown. You know, mm. you can you can buy copies. Mm. But I was trying to, and I said to a Jamaican friend, an old man, he said, "Go to this place here. There's a Nigerian woman in the market." Uh, in, so in I, Netherlands? No, in England. In England, okay. And she so so you so you see the cloth. All the cloths are there. You choose a cloth, and she makes what you want. Either the gown of whatever length. Yes. So I've got gown, shorts, and pants. Mm. How long you know? can it take to be done? Oh well, today. Uh, well, uh, no, well, no, you know, you've got to, you're going to wait about a month. She's, she's absolutely close shop now. It's, it, it's, but I've got plenty of gowns. Uh, mm. There's one mm. I was showing you, which is a very famous one. Yeah. Okay. But everybody, everyone, even the Nigerians, everyone is coppers a shanty okay. because it was the it was known as the I Tribe gown once upon a time, and especially a shanty, they had all the gold. So everybody was trading with a shanty. Mm -hmm. So they were gold, they were the kentes, they were, you know, they were lavish, lavish, lavish word, you understand me? Yeah. Because that's, that, that's, you know, that it was, there was, you know, a, a rich tribe. So, uh, okay. everybody copies the Ashanti really. Uh, but yeah, this, this is like authentic, you know, been made for me to fit me, you know? Yeah. Hmm. But it's only done in the palace, in the, in the, in the cultural leaders now. Well, well, this, you can buy, you, you can go to a shanty, you can have a kente made, or you can have these made. But there's, but there's only, there's certain ones which only the royal family will, will wear, you know, only certain designs which they keep for themselves. Once upon a time, yeah. they, wouldn't, they wouldn't release it to the public, now they do. Okay. It was only for the royal family they sort of were once, it was mm. only for royalty. Yeah. So that's why they're so popular because they were re released by royalty and it's yeah. obviously a bit of a... Uh, after Canary's, but the Ashanti tribe are not all innocent because they were big slave owners. Mm. They were big slave, and everybody traded with the Ashanti. Mm. I, I don't know what sort of trade, I think they did a little trade with the Arabs, but mainly trade mm. with England. 
Yeah. You know, and uh, they fought the British for 100 years, you shanty. They fought, they, they fought colonisation for yeah. the longest. 100 years, yeah. Mm. They fought, they beat the British on numerous occasions. Yeah. I mean, you hear about the Zulu, they're like the biggest. So, this is what I'm special where you can go behind it and get to the point of view. So, we can go behind the water. Too. Are we going to go that way? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just watched my phone, obviously, I don't want that getting wet, but uh, mm. I don't think I'll take this, I don't think I'll miss the shower today. No, yeah. we're not going to be wet, we're just passing by them. Yeah, we we'll must be the other it's like a rainforest, isn't it? A rainforest. Yeah, right. it's a rainforest. Yeah. That's the rainforest. 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 That's no, but it's okay. Do what the clean. So, uh, and you have bees also in in, in of England? Of course, yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course, I have bees here. <laughs> so, but we don't we don't harvest the honey. Should you harvest them? Should you disturb them? Or will sting whoever comes. Yeah, okay. So that's why they you leave the honey with them. Yeah, you, know, you leave the honey with them. They don't. I mean, if you set up hives, they might it might attract them. They might you might get honey if you, you, had, you had hives. But there's many yes. bees around the world. Yes. But you know this this. This, this place is in Nepal and they climb very high yes. to harvest the honey yeah. on the cliff tops. They risk their lives basically. Man. It's a special honey. And I see places in Africa where they do it also, climb yeah. trees yeah. to harvest the honey, you know. So the one is in parallel are the dog leg breast, the other ones, eh? Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the this cow one, the adder. This one, the of a cow. This one. Eh? Yeah, with the four teeth. Yeah. yeah. And then this one looks more of a human being. This one, yeah. So they call it the princess's breast. Right. Uh -huh, yes. Okay. That before uh, the geologists came in, that this area had the people who were known as Bachwes. They were like giants. They were. They, they had some natural superpower. That during their stay here, uh, they had a king, and then that king being here, he was not contented. He was being disturbed by these earthquakes, tectonic forces. But whenever he could hear them, he would think somebody are trying to attack him. So now he wanted to know who were behind the shaking. Who was shaking his territory yet he was using these caves as his palace yeah. so he went to consult from the fortune teller so when he went there he was foretold that you know what you'd be succeeded by your own king, your own grandson and the king said no in his life he had only one daughter who are known as Minamuru. It's believed she was so beautiful mm. that all men around wanted to marry her but the king never wanted the daughter to get married Although men would come there next for her. So what he did was to cut off her breast. I heard this, yeah. Yes, this is what I heard, yeah. And these are the breasts we couldn't believe to have been. This is what I heard, yeah. Yeah, so that she could not produce. Yeah, I heard, so I read something, yeah, to do yeah. with that, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, but if you continue with the story, even though she was deformed, still a number of men kept coming and the king never wanted it, so he constructed a special palace for her. She was kept in there without knowing in, in his palace there were other male servants like any other human being. So one of the servants went in and pregnanted mm, her. Right, okay. At the end of the day, she gave birth to a baby boy and the king never wanted that baby boy. So he instructed his servants to go and kill. Mm. But those servants whom he trusted to kill on his behalf, they never killed. They dumped the baby here where they had put the breast of his mom. So they went and convinced the king that they had killed. So a certain man came and picked the baby and raised him. So as he was growing, he was told all the stories of his granddad. So mm. the boy became so angry. He wanted to go and revenge, mm. but it wasn't easy to attack a king because of the security of that course, they yeah. were the presidents of those days. So he went and fought with the herdsmen of the king and he said that he had only one cow he loved the most. So the boy would beat that cow, would torture that cow, but torturing the king indirectly. So now the, these other herdsmen went and reported him. So the king decided to come and see who had that boy. And when he had come, he said he had come with the name of killing the boy, but after reaching there, he looked at the nature of the boy, saw the resemblance of the family. We call it the smelling blood came into him. Mm. He decided not, not to kill, like how he had planned when he was still at his palace. But as he was still observing, the boy had a grazing stick like this one, so he had to beat that cow in his presence. So the king was very much furious. He got the spear, he threw to the boy, but by good luck, the boy dodged the spear and picked it and then returned it to his granddad and then killed him. Killed him. Okay. So the professor came to be. Right, okay. <laughs> so now people look forward to see where that boy survived on mm. here in the Hura, one of the choice king and who is believed to be in the Hura that he survived from the breast of his mom here. Right, okay. So they call it the princess's breast came into existence. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, that's the story. Yeah. <laughs> But that's that, that's for those who did try geography as Yes, a, yes, uh -huh. yeah. For those who never went to school, yeah, to those that. who Our did try geography and science, as we are trying it today. Actually, like when you're here, you can see the clear view of that big boob. Are you seeing that one, that big nearby one here? That big breast there. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> 